The cloud is Jesus passing through the sea. Remember, see the salvation of the Lord? That's Jesus. He's saying everything about this account is picturing their baptism into the trials of Christ, okay? And then he says, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. We're going to get to that when Moses makes water come out of the rock. What's that? Is that the manna? Then? The manna as well. He's going to mention that at some point. Yes? It just occurred to me, the um, water is parted and the people going through it uh, with God leading them is kind of like the covenant being fulfilled. That's right. That's right, and that's the it's he's like the covenant, and at the same time, it's like the baptism. He's saying that this is what, and the covenant is like the baptism. When you're baptized, it's it's confirming what you've done. So that's exactly right. That's a very good analogy. But he goes on in verse five to say, but with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Okay, what does that mean? They were lacking what? Faith. Faith. Okay, Paul is saying that faith is what delivers us. Faith is what saves us, and it is faith in the works of Christ. Anyway, so that's just a, a point that Paul says everything that we're reading right now is just simply types and figures of the coming work of Jesus. Okay, just so you know that when you're reading this, this isn't just a fun account of what happened to deliver Israel. It had a theological implication that would be realized at a future date in Jesus. Okay, all right. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh, so that came in, that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Okay, now what verse are we in? Because I'm, I'm 28. 28. Okay, so we're in uh, 29. Okay, um, so we have the. Uh, uh, Moses stretched at his hand, the seas closed in on him, and I think I mentioned that in this class last week that oh, I, I don't need to right, right now because they're not at war yet. I will mention it again when they're at war. But remember that when the Egyptians were drowned, everything that floated would have just washed up on the shore. And that includes all of their weapons and all of their anything that the Egyptians can use. Because I had a real problem with them going to war with Amalek in the very near future we're going to read about that, when in fact it's resolvable. You read the writings of Flavius Josephus, and Josephus specifically says, not only were the Egyptians destroyed, but all of their booty and all of their plunder just washed up on the shore and the people were able to use it. So, just solves things, because I, I stress over these things. If I see, well, God tells them not to go up to Israel because they're going to be afraid of war, and all of a sudden on the other side of the uh, Red Sea, they're in a battle, it's like a contradiction in my head unless you understand why. It's because they were able to defend themselves because of the Egyptians. And you've got to figure if there are 600 chariots, choice chariots, plus lots of other chariots, plus foot soldiers. I mean, you're talking about thousands and thousands of swords and, you know, everything floating up on the shore. So this, they were well armed by the time they were ready for battle. The Lord didn't leave anything out. Now, that's not in the Bible. Once, once again, I want to make sure that you understand that's not in the Bible, but Flavius Josephus wrote it, and it confirms what the Bible proclaims, that they went to war just real recently after that. How could they have done that? That's the answer. Okay, please, go ahead. So, the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. With all of their swords. Good. Okay. Thus, Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Oh boy. See, they're believing again. They were believing, then disbelieving, then believing. Guess what's going to happen within about a couple, yeah, it just, it's amazing. But once again, don't be hard on them because we do it every day that we wake up. If you don't do that, then you are a lot stronger Christian than I am. Because I tell you, there's never a day that I wake up and something doesn't fret me. Oh, you know, and I got to tell you, let me tell you a little story right now. It breaks my heart, but this happened today. Is um, I, I was at home and I got this email from a lady who lives up in either New Jersey or New York. I think it's New York. And she's been a Facebook friend for a couple years. And I used to, every day when I had time, I'd post on everybody's wall every single day. Not their wall, but if they made a post, I commented on their post. And so, you know, you got eight or 900 friends, and it takes a while. But I do it every single day. Hey, have a great day, you know, hope everything's okay. Well, 
I'm hardly on Facebook at all anymore. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm on and, you know, but this, I get this email from this girl and she says, you know, I, I want you to know that I, I uh, have a brain tumor and then last week uh, I was told by my boss that I'm not wanted anymore and she says, Charlie, I'm very upset at you. You didn't even comment. She said, for all the things that you do, uplifting people and posting things, you never even commented. And I thought, you know, I, I remember pulling out my driveway and thinking, you know, I can't believe she would think that way. If I saw that, the first thing I'm going to do is, it, it, it should be obvious to her that I didn't see the post. I just simply haven't been on in the past week other than to just post the Bible verse and a couple other things and I leave. And, uh, I, uh, but that's, that's the same thing. It's not, I, and I'm not saying that she's lacking faith in me. It's just that she, I guess you could say that, you know. If she knew who I was, I would never, never dismiss somebody's pain like that. I wouldn't do it. And so I emailed her right back immediately, and I was getting late. I had to come and pick up Roy here, and, and uh, I, I thought, you know, I've got to answer this right now. I said, I am so sorry. I have not seen your posts at all. I, you know, I answered her. I said, we've got a prayer request group. I'll, I'll, I'll post it there if you'd like. Let me know. And I went to her wall, and I made another post, and, you know, but... It, this is the way we are. We look at things very narrowly throughout life. And this is what they've been doing. And here they've been looking narrowly and then they get all excited. And, and uh, here is a good thing that I would like to tell you on the same context. And this will help you, I hope, to think about the week ahead, each week after Sunday. I'm going to say this and uh, if you've been in other churches, then you will know that this is true depending on what church you've been. When I, and I, like I say, I'm not on Facebook nearly as much as I used to be, but when I was on every day, there were two categories of Christians that I would see post throughout the week. The first one would go to like the Church of Hope, okay, charismatic, not charismatic, but you know, fluffy. They, they got lots of music and it's, it, the sermons are not theologically deep. They're all, yeah, it's feel good, right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, the big one right by the interstate. And there's a couple other churches around here like that. They're, they're, they're feel good. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And most of the people that I know from my high school go to that church. You know, most of them. And they're, they're very shallow in their theology. Nothing wrong with that either. And I say to them, they'll invite me and I'll go, like, I'd never go on a Sunday morning, but if they're getting baptized on Wednesday night or something, I'll show up there and I'll be with them. And... I've said to several of them, when you're ready to go beyond this, you'll come to a church like Grace. And I don't mean specifically Grace. There's lots of other churches that, that preach right out of the Word and that have Bible studies. But right now, that's where they are in their life. They just are at this shallow point. But here's the problem that happens, and this is week after week after week. Sunday after the church service, People from Grace usually say, great sermon, pastor, whatever, you know, it was a good service, and that's about all you see, right? And in the middle of the week, the people from Grace say, you know, um, boy, it sure is nice to know Jesus Christ, and, uh, or, you know, I'm going to a retreat, or, you know, it's always a very steady type of post. It's nothing emotional, it's just very steady, and they're always grateful, regardless. You know, my mother got run over by a tractor today, but the Lord is good. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that's, uh, but you know what I'm saying. It's always very understanding of what's going on. Here's what happens with the people from this other church, or some of the other, like Suncoast over here, same thing, my daughter attended there for a long time, and very good church, just like Hope, but it's a little shallower. Here's what I would see with the posts throughout the week. Sunday, right after church. Jesus is the best, and oh, I, what a Holy Spirit-filled uh, sermon, and on and on and on. Big, big words, right? Tuesday morning. Oh, I'm just, I, my life is terrible, and everything is falling apart, and, and why is God not loving me? And, and it, 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 within two days, or usually within a day and a half of their church service, where God is the greatest, they're right back to where they were at the beginning of the week. And and, but the people at Grace, because they understand the nature of God and that God loves you despite troubles. He loves you, just, but you're not going to get that over there. All you're going to get is God loves you. He wants the best for you. He wants to bless you. Well, as I said, we are collectively in the society. When the society collapses and everybody gets foreclosed in Sarasota, it's going to affect people in every church. And so here is the difference, because I know people in this church and at the tabernacle were 
some other friends go, when they would have their house foreclosed, their post would be, you know, it really hurts. It's very hard to leave this home. You know, this is where our children grow up, but the Lord has something better. Same post from somebody at Hope. I can't believe God has allowed this to happen. It's just, he, he must not love me. And it, So you see the difference. And I'm trying to get you to understand that there is a big difference when you understand that God is sovereign. Now, I don't know if any of you, uh, maybe Jay, you read it because you get my daily devotionals a couple weeks ago. And, and maybe you saw this too. I, once in a while, I'll give a little one-liner. And my, Yeah, and I, I, I gave one a, a week or two ago that the sovereignty of God tells us that a single bean as a dinner should be thanked. Or we should be thankful for even a single bean for dinner. And, and I misquoted that. But in other words, if that's all we have to eat for dinner, we need to be grat grateful for it. Because He is sovereign. We didn't deserve even that one bean. Whereas other people will say, I didn't get a steak dinner tonight, and I just can't believe God. You know, I've been eating steak for 20 years, and now I can't have my steak dinner. Listen, one bean... And the reason why I made that quote, it came out of my head, is because I was listening to D. James Kennedy. If you know who he is, he's the, uh, the preacher that, he's dead now, but Coral Ridge Ministries, the Presbyterian Church on the East Coast. And he told about some of his missionaries that were over in, I think, Ethiopia or one of these countries. And there was a family, and this family, all they had for a meal each day was a bean. That's all they had. And they would put their bean out in front of them, and this went on for quite a while during this drought. They'd put their bean out and they'd say, we are now going to thank the Lord for our bean or for our meal. You know, they weren't being sarcastic. They were honestly thankful for what they had. And when you can get to that type of a point in your walk with Jesus Christ, you are in a really sweet spot because bad times are coming for every one of us. Well, I think it takes bad times to get to that. Well, that's right. But some people, when they get to the bad times, they walk away because they say, this isn't the God that I've been worshiping. And that's, you can tell the type by Tuesday morning posts on Facebook. You can tell the type. And that doesn't mean that all of them, that doesn't mean they're not saved. Okay, if they have called on the name of Jesus Christ, they are saved, but they are not grounded in understanding why bad things happen to good people. And, you know, most of these churches will never get into the book of Job. And if you read Job and you understand it for what it is, you understand that God loves even Job in the midst of the worst affliction. None of us will ever suffer like Job did. And yet Job what did he say? When all of these bad things happened to him at the end of the, end of the chapter, his wife said, curse God and die. And he says, you're talking like one of the foolish women. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I shall return there. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you can do that, you're in a sweet spot with God. So, And I don't know if I'll be able to. I'm just telling you that that is what God hopes we will do. But when I come to the bad time, I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not. I'm not trying to tell any of you that, that I, I can transcend troubles because, man, I hate troubles. But we'll see. You know, if it happens in my life, we will see. But please keep that in mind. Yes? What about people that uh, you pray for all the time, like for finance oh, yeah. and all this sort of thing, and then something good happens and and they forget all about that. Oh, that's right. You know what? And I'll tell you, every week when we're doing mission work, Tom Alley and I, we're down there. And every single week, I say the same thing. I'll, we'll say, you know, we'll just see somebody walking down the road and we'll stop them and say, can we pray with you? Well, I'm all right. Well, yeah, I, I, I need a financial breakthrough. And I'll, so we'll pray and we'll add that in. Along, and of course, where we are, they really need the breakthrough. I mean, we're in the projects. You know, most people don't have two nickels to rub together, but don't get me wrong, they have cell phones and they've got brand new shoes. and So they're not wise with what they're doing. But despite that, um, you know, we'll pray for them. And at the end of my prayer, or Tom, Tom usually prays a little differently, but at the end of my prayer, I always say the same thing. Lord, if you respond to, to this prayer, according to your great mercy, please give this person the wisdom to remember to thank you. And I, I say that specifically because I want them to know that this is something that God expects. And you're right, a lot of people get these things and they just forget all about it. You know, they, they completely forget about it. And God doesn't always answer prayers. You know, sometimes not getting what we want is an answer to the prayer, but we don't see that. We don't understand that. What He wants for us is not to win the lotto. And, you know, I keep telling people, I, I hope somebody, someday somebody will build me a big church out on the key. So I, it may be the best thing that that never happens. 
You know what? I, I, can, I can put my put my foot pretty far into my mouth, as you all know, right? If that were to happen, I could, you know, we don't know. 